and insightful program, Zero to Hero. This is the show that comes to you every Mondays through our channel, Ringo TV. My name is Pamela. Zero to Hero aims to look at fulfilled destinies of many successful self-made millionaires and billionaires who overcame difficult odds and took gigantic risks to success. Many of these self-made millionaires and billionaires didn't all begin with a silver lining. In fact, some began with only a plan and an idea. But how they transformed the two into money is the core objective of this program. I am very enthusiastic about inspiring and empowering you to understand your vision and goals and how to transform those into money by interviewing powerful individuals who began from zeros to heroes. Today in the program, we have one of the most renowned, experienced, powerful, and an outstanding neurosurgery professor. In the continent of Africa, a continent with only 1.2 billion people, there's only 500 neurosurgery professionals. But more specifically, in Tanzania, a country that serves 50 million people, we only have 10 neurosurgery professionals and among those, there's only two neurosurgery professors. I repeat, two neurosurgery professors. And Professor Kahamba is one of them. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the program Zero to Hero. As I stated earlier, we have one of the most renowned, powerful, inspiring, and experienced Professor Kahamba in the program today. Very honored to have him in the show. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Pamela. How was your day? Uh, it was uh, a little bit busy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I understand you're a very busy person, and we are very honored that you've taken your time to be with us in the program. I'm pleased to. To incite us about the, you know, this um, entire neurosurgery uh, profession that you had um, embarked into many yeah. years ago and how you're carrying on with it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that, sir. Tell us, what exactly is neurosurgery? <coughs> yes, Pamela, um, neurosurgery is uh, the part of medicine which uh, deals with uh, diseases of the brain, okay. spine, and peripheral nerves that are supposed to be treated by the surgery. Right. So all the diseases uh, that involve the nervous system yeah, and these uh, could be uh, congenital, that is, uh, people are born with these diseases, yes. or they could be infectious, right. that we get through infections, or these diseases could be uh, neoplasms, that is, cancers. Right. And right now, as the order of the day is, these could be traumatic, that result from uh, accidents and uh, crashes. Mm -hmm. on the roads and other areas. Right. So all of these diseases that affect the nervous system and need to be treated through operation or surgery are uh, the part which constitute neurosurgery. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, quite a number of things there. Yes, it is. All right. What was the driving force for you to major into the profession of neurosurgery? Yeah, it is um, a long journey. First, I think uh, I should say um, you should start by thinking of becoming a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, uh, as a student uh, in secondary school, I think I started thinking of becoming a doctor, and uh, I pursued that goal. And then, um, uh, therefore, I managed to go to medical school, mm -hmm. which I did uh, in Romania. That took me some seven years and uh, I came back and as usual we have to do some internship and then I went up country to work as a general duty doctor right. uh, now there you meet uh, some other people which uh, inspire you into other areas so I met a person who inspired me into becoming a surgeon that is about doing general surgery okay. so uh, after having spent some three years up country I came back to uh, the University of Dar es Salaam then mm -hmm. uh, at Mumbai and pursued a course for three years in general surgery. Right. Uh, after uh, graduating as a general surgeon, I was requested to remain at uh, Mumbai as a, a teacher as well as a surgeon. 
Now, um, I worked there for two years, and then uh, some forces, uh, there were some forces which brought me into neurosurgery. Uh, so uh, I was working in the department of chest and heart surgery, but I moved to neurosurgery then. And um, I saw myself uh, going to Switzerland and Germany, mm -hmm. and some other places uh, to train as a neurosurgeon. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you um, are you passionate um, about what you do as a neurosurgeon? It is extremely exciting. I think uh, neurosurgery is one of the most interesting disciplines uh, among all disciplines in medicine. Right. Um, much as it takes a long time to train, much as it needs quite a lot of exposure to uh, to get to that expertise which is needed. Uh, but um, it is uh, very exciting that um, the problems that you get um, are quite challenging okay. and uh, you need the most uh, you, you need to have the most delicate and most uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, advanced kind of uh, acumen into determining the diseases that is diagnosing the diseases and um, uh, thinking out the right path towards uh, correct treatment of these diseases. And there is a myth among uh, people that um, this is an area where diseases are not uh, treatable, which is not true, yeah. I hasten to say. Um, they say once somebody gets a disease, a brain tumor, for instance, or something else, then it's treatable, it's not true. Um, neurosurgery is one of the fastest uh, advancing discipline in terms of uh, technology and treatment and uh, therefore it is uh, quite uh, challenging. It's also nice to tell you that uh, alongside this uh, treatment uh, kind of treatment path yeah. I'm also a teacher to medical students postgraduate uh, at all levels in neurosurgery therefore it makes it very very exciting. Wow, yeah. very exciting indeed. We have 50 million people in the country, in yeah. Tanzania, yeah. and um, uh, you, you are the only, we have 10, 10 neurosurgeons in the country. I mean, only 10 out of 50 million people that Tanzania has as a population. How do you feel to be among, to be a professor of neurosurgery and being among only 10 neurosurgeons in the country. How do you feel about that? Yeah, um, um, I feel that, uh, I do feel that maybe this is God sent, okay. uh, because I think uh, as a Tanzanian, like anybody else, um, I would like to have my share of contribution towards uh, uh, the development of our nation. And um, this is the path uh, which uh, probably uh, I have been uh, uh, directed to serve and uh, I can tell you that I feel an obligation. I feel that I have a, a duty to do to the country. Not to be the only professor of neurosurgery among the few, but to try and see that we come out of this uh, not very good situation, so to speak. Yes. But to get to a point where we develop capacity in this area and that uh, we are able to at least match with uh, our colleagues in other parts of the world because mm -hmm. I think Tanzanians uh, definitely need this service. Absolutely. And maybe we shall discuss this. There is the disease burden in this area is enormous okay. and it is quite a challenging to be few. Uh, you are saying we are 10, which is true. But uh, this is out of the effort that uh, we have had for the past few years, okay. because most of my colleagues are much younger. Okay. Uh, in the near past, yeah, some maybe 10 years ago or 15, there were at any given moment only one or two of us. Right. So that was worse than, it was than what we have now. But um, what we see is that we should improve this situation definitely cannot stay like this. And that's why, among others, 
um, we have started a training program by our Muhindi Universal Health and uh, Allied Sciences. Okay. So we are training our neurosurgeons here. We have capability and capacity now to train neurosurgeons. And I, as I speak, we have four residents right. in training. We do also have around six residents abroad in different uh, countries and in different levels of training. And I think as we progress, we shall have more and more, more and more uh, trainees and therefore more and more neurosurgeons. Yeah. Uh, in the past, neurosurgery uh, was uh, only, uh, or we, we, we had the neurosurgical department at Mundili only in the country. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, started also a satellite uh, service with one neurosurgeon in Bugando and we are sure uh, it will expand right. and therefore um, I, I'm sure and this is what we envisage that um, uh, as we get along we get more neurosurgeons mm -hmm. and young dynamic uh, uh, who would match the advancing technology in neurosurgery okay. and therefore give the services to our people to, our people, to save, yeah. the, um, to save the life or health and society. Yeah. Very good. Because I was wondering what the country is doing in terms of um, uh, training and, and, and empowering uh, the natives, the natives um, to, to, to undertake uh, neurosurgery as a profession. So what you're saying is um, the country is doing quite well yes, in terms yes. of um, training its own people other than relying on foreign um, uh, personnel to come into the country. Yes, and spending so much money into you know, training, accommodating, paying. Absolutely. Is that correct? At this point, yeah. let me tell you now that you touched on that, yeah. uh, neurosurgery is the discipline which uh, has most of the uh, very sophisticated diseases, which uh, therefore, at times, because of uh, either lack of enough expertise mm -hmm. or, on the other hand, lack of uh, appropriate equipment yes. uh, the largest numbers of people who go abroad for treatment actually come from neurosurgery but uh, i would like uh, to make it known that right now the trend is changing right. in that the numbers of people who require or need uh, treatment abroad is getting lesser and lesser and we, we would like to see this continue very good okay we're going to go for a short break and we'll resume in due time Okay, thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the program, Zero to Hero. We have neurosurgery Professor Kahamba in the show today. He has been talking to us about his profession as a neurosurgeon and how he embarked into that journey. What motivated him and inspired him into doing neurosurgery um, and where the country is moving in terms of um, supporting. Uh, the citizens um, into doing neurosurgery. Welcome back, sir. Thank you very much. Again. Yeah, thank you. Um, what is the future of neurosurgeons in Tanzania? Um, thank you very much for that question uh, because uh, most people tend to ask that question. We think uh, the future of neurosurgery in Tanzania is uh, great <coughs> because. Um, First of all, there is uh, a lot of uh, good political will and um, everybody uh, in terms of policy and the Minister of Health is looking at neurosurgery very critically because they, they see the importance of neurosurgery to our country. Uh, to concretize that, I would like to say there is a lot of input into neurosurgery, one being training but the second one, uh, developing capacity in terms of facilities. Yes. Um, we have had the Muhimbiri Orthopedic Institute uh, where neurosurgery is uh, incorporated. Okay. And um, a few years back, uh, a lot of uh, funds were dispersed, uh, which uh, enabled the construction of an extension building, a very beautiful uh, seven-story building. Uh, imposing, which is there now, although we're just about to go into it. And um, I think even right now, uh, some quite a significant sum of money has been released. 
uh, to equip uh, that uh, that uh, facility with the most modern equipment. And, um, and I like to tell you that uh, neurosurgical equipment is uh, very uh, expensive. They are very, very expensive. For instance, um, an operating microscope, we have right now an ultra-modern operating microscope, costs between 500 million to uh, 500,000 to 1 million US dollars. Yeah? and a lot of other similar types of uh, <coughs> equipment. And the government is giving out uh, money for that uh, kind of services. Okay. So um, everybody is uh, excited. Okay. Uh, the young uh, doctors and uh, young specialists are all uh, motivated to joining neurosurgery right oh. now. Okay. And uh, I think the future for neurosurgery is great, uh, apart from the fact that uh, Neurosurgery, I think, is one of the most rewarding currently in terms of job satisfaction and the, the, the lot. Very good. Yeah. That's very inspiring. Yeah. I mean, neurosurgery is a very demanding job. I'm yeah. sure um, I understand you're a father of four, and um, this profession is quite demanding. It takes most of your time, your energy. Um, I'm sure pretty much um, most of your life is dedicated into serving the society, saving lives. Um, how do you balance that, um, being um, a neurosurgeon and at the same time a father and a husband? How do you balance your, your profession and your family life? Yes, uh, very challenging, uh, very challenging question. Um, you, are, you, are, you are definitely right uh, because, uh, first of all, we say we are few. Yeah. And therefore, the burden for the few neurosurgeons for the whole country is very big. And then there is the teaching uh, part, yeah. Yeah, which uh, has to be met. And uh, on the other side now, you, you are talking about uh, the family. And um, I'm married to a working wife. She's working. And therefore, you know, most of our time is spent at work. Uh, you have somehow, you have no choice but to work out a program that uh, would fit all these. It has to be uh, very balanced because uh, uh, we are very dedicated. I'm very dedicated to my work, to my job, but also um, I'm also dedicated to my family. And therefore, you have to, I don't know how I could explain this mm -hmm. better, but uh, somehow uh, I have always found time to serve both. Right. Yeah. Um, what keeps you going, brother? <coughs> oh, how have you managed, like, have you got a specific discipline maybe in terms of um, time, uh, you know, specific time? Uh, schedule, how, how do you <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, you moving? This is you... another difficult question because, um, uh, you know, when you have such a tight schedule, yes. there is a lot of interruptions, yes. even if you are so strict and so disciplined. You know, there are those uh, things which were unanticipated uh, during a day or your week or your month. Mm -hmm. They come in uh, impromptu and you have to deal with them. Uh, there are emergencies, there are administrative issues, uh, there are many other issues which come. And then, uh, you know, our cultural, or yes, our cultural kind of uh, uh, ways. I would walk into hospital and uh, some uh, uncle just mm -hmm. come in, his friend, uh, to, to be attended to who was not in the program and you have to go uh, and do it. So it is indeed extremely demanding, but uh, I think uh, you, you have to find a way of, uh, of uh, balancing this. It, it has been possible, you know, I wouldn't say I've fared badly, but okay. it is indeed taxing. Right. It is very taxing. Okay. Uh, the other day, um, uh, I had promised my kids that I, would, my kids that I would be taking them out. And as we were just at the gate going out, uh, the hospital car came saying there was an emergency in the wow. hospital. 
and uh, this has been uh, the end time I have been promising. So you see, mm. such kind of situations arise. It's uh, just an but, understanding. Uh, yeah, this is true to maybe everybody uh, in the profession, but also maybe even in other professions. I think, but ours is indeed very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay, so you have um, you 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 majored. Um, basically um, in, in the profession of medicine. But I also understand that you have an MBA uh, profession. Well, you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do have that. Yes. So um, why, why um, haven't you used that into your career and, and the MBA um, profession that you have? Well, I have been using that. Right. Okay. Um, may I say that um, I was the pioneer, if uh, not one of the pioneers, but I think I was the, the, the first one from the medical field to venture out and go and do an MBA at the University of Dar es Salaam. Right. And this I was doing part-time, yeah. After my work, five o'clock, uh, I would drive uh, again, you know, I drive along traffic going to the university to, to do these evening classes and so on. Sometimes I walked into the university there uh, when they have uh, had gone maybe a quarter of, of the examination time and I would go and I managed to do it on time uh, but uh, I think this is the kind of drive that has been in me first of all at that particular time I felt that I wanted to go into something new uh, because uh, I always want to see that something new is uh, around uh, but uh, I want to acknowledge that the very first day I went into that classroom, I realized how much we have been missing. And the motivation that drove me to go and do it was that I had noted that maybe uh, administrators in hospitals uh, who are doctors were not doing very well. And uh, the MBA actually is a misnomer. It's called the Masters in Business Administration. It's mostly about management. Yes. And the very first I walked there, I realized that, oh, look, this is what we really need to uh, augment what we already have. When uh, people talk to you about organizational behavior, when they teach you about uh, managerial economics, mm -hmm. when they teach you, and at my level, somehow, uh, there is no way you can disentangle yourself from management issues, yes. because I've been sitting in uh, in all those uh, 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 levels of management and um, I've been head of neurosurgery for a long, long period. Uh, but I also found that this training also uh, puts you into a better position to manage even issues like the family. Oh. And so on. It's, a, it's, a, it's a cause which I would advise anybody in any profession to pursue. Is quite useful, okay. and I've been using it. I'm using it now in your daily life. Yes, in my daily life. Right. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Professor, can you insight us? Can a medical doctor? Is it possible for a medical doctor to be an entrepreneur at the same time? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, and this is maybe where I would like to. Uh, advise uh, my colleagues and especially the young doctors yeah. right that um, first of all after they graduate um, uh, it's not enough that uh, perfect doctors they should somehow go into some kind of specialization into an area where they will be masters of that area and then after that uh, they can uh, they can venture into uh, going into, uh, apart from public service, where the majority of doctors are employed, yeah, at one given moment and early in their life, uh, those with uh, entrepreneurial inclination yeah. should uh, consider uh, venturing into group practice. And this means uh, forming groups that would work uh, uh, together and uh, maybe um, establish uh, hospital or health service facilities um, which are an alternative to public service. You know, as we said earlier, 
right now in our country there is uh, still a very big need a very big need of uh, health services and an alternative definitely is provided by the private sector and i would uh, i would say that uh, the private sector in our country is not as developed as first of all uh, as our neighbors here mm -hmm. and even further yeah. and uh, right now the conditions are conducive as i would say uh, in terms of uh, to support yes i agree in terms of financial uh, support mm -hmm. a lot of financial institutions now uh, are all out to, say, to, to support uh, young doctors and other doctors to establish that kind of uh, facility and therefore I think um, it's uh, an undertaking that needs a little bit of time therefore the earlier you, you one ventures into this the better so um, I think uh, it is uh, very true that uh, doctors can venture into the areas of uh, outside private, of, yeah. outside of the public, mm -hmm. they can, rather than the current practice, you know, the current practice is that uh, these doctors uh, keep on moving from one hospital to another uh, to serve some, uh, some uh, already established services, uh, which really uh, is not an, a cost-effective method yes. of uh, trying to serve the people. Because uh, it's a kind of a dependency exactly. uh, it is theory that exactly. you're depending on public service alone. Yes, and some, publi and some pub uh, private uh, institutions which, I'm sorry to say, some are uh, exploitative right. yeah, onto the... Onto the, 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 the experience and knowledge of these people so I would indeed uh, advise that the easiest way actually because as we say this capital and intensive and so on they should form groups it's called group practice uh -huh. and this uh, would help them uh, serve the people better right. and serve themselves better yeah, yeah. all right thank you for that yeah. thank you for that insightful yeah, information thank you. Yeah. hello again welcome back to the program Professor um, Kahamba, um, you have a Doctor of Medicine, a Master of Medicine, a Master of Science, um, FCE, ECSA, and an MBA. Why MBA, which is a bit different from the entire uh, medical profession? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's true. Um, it came much later than uh, all the others, yeah, and um, I think it came out of uh, necessity. Uh, there came a time when I felt that uh, maybe as a professional doctor, uh, having seen uh, what was transpiring in our industry, I felt that uh, there could be something that uh, could be useful if um, it augmented uh, the, the knowledge that we already had. And uh, this was uh, the field of management, which actually um, is mostly to do with MBA. So um, I decided that I think, let me venture and see if indeed there is something that uh, as a profession we might be missing. And I came to discover that uh, I wasn't wrong and that this is a very useful part of uh, uh, knowledge uh, that we need to complete uh, the, the knowledge that we have in order to dispense our, 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 our services. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, it has been quite useful to me. Very useful. Yeah. All right. And um, away from the medical profession, have you um, utilized the, um, the business side of your um, qualification? Yes, I have. Sense? Yes, I have. Um, for instance, um, I can say that uh, for a while, uh, and even now I think uh, I do participate uh, 
uh, in uh, uh, stock exchange business, uh, which uh, most people in my profession don't, I assume. And it has been quite useful to me. Uh, it is because of the knowledge uh, that I had from my MBA training. But also, uh, I'm currently venturing into setting up um, a, a, a hospital service. Oh, really? uh, yes, uh, oh. that, uh, that would measure in my specialization, although probably it could cut up for other fields as well. Right. Uh, so I think. Uh, I, I, I won't be, and I haven't been only a neurosurgeon, but that uh, a number of times I've also had to to cope with managerial tasks and, uh, and yeah. other entrepreneurial uh, kind of uh, uh, ventures and thinking. Okay. So throughout, throughout your medicine career, um, how, how are you going to, basically you have vast uh, majority of uh, experience both locally and international in this profession of neurosurgery um, and uh, as you have just stated you are looking forward into opening your own hospital um, what what experience have you um, you know drawn from your current profession in, and that you're going to take into your your um, new journey to opening a hospital yes first of all I have uh, come to learn that uh, Neurosurgery and hospital services in general is capital intensive. Right. And therefore, if you want to go into this uh, kind of venture, you have to know how to uh, manage uh, uh, finances, how to raise finances, and how to, 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 to run such, uh, such uh, finances efficiently, profitably, that is. And um, it also requires uh, um, human capacity management, uh, human resource yeah. management, which is not an easy job, I have come to learn, uh, that um, you have to know how to, how, how to handle people. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, you have to know that uh, you should be all the time uh, up to date with the newest product uh, around mm -hmm. uh, so that you entice so you, 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 you prove that uh, what you're offering is uh, something that is worthy uh, giving. Yeah. So I think uh, putting these together uh, with the professional, uh, specific professional knowledge that I have I think uh, will uh, bring some some very fruitful uh, achievements. I think. All right, we believe in you. Um, all right, thank you. What are the three big things that you would like to leave as a legacy for the current and the future generation? Three things. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I think, and I may refer to the youth that. Uh, one of the biggest thing is to have the urge to learn. There is a lot of things that we need to learn, not from college or school or whatever, but in life and in our professions. All the time we have to have that urge to, to learn the new. And uh, secondly, I think, is to persevere, to have the steam, to keep going, not to uh, give, up on an idea. give up or despair. Mm -hmm. yeah, that I think uh, is uh, something which lets people, uh, quite a number of people down. That yeah. you get to a point, you can't move on. And then the third one is, I think, to uh, to, to to what you had uh, alluded to earlier, to try and uh, be disciplined and implement um, to the utmost. Implement to the best of your capacity, that uh, part of uh, service that you are, you, are, you are trying to do, that kind of uh, thing you are doing, you right. should do it, try and do it perfectly. Uh, although I am sure that uh, it will never be 100%, but definitely if you have those at the back of your mind, then uh, keep you keep going and you, you definitely succeed. Right. You definitely get a success. 
Who are you most grateful for in your life? Honestly, this has come out of uh, yeah, I didn't know you would ask that, <laughs> but um, uh, my parents have con contributed quite a lot um, in my formative years, in my very early years, uh, my childhood, um, driving me to the right direction so all the time, making sure I was lucky that uh, my, 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 my father was... Uh, an a kind of emancipated person, I was a civil servant and I moved around with him. So I think this influenced me somehow to try and do uh, better at whatever I try to do. Uh, but then I think uh, 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 I, I should say that I'm also grateful to my family definitely because uh, they, they have uh, been supportive. Uh, I have spent a lot of time outside the country during my training mm -hmm. with small kids around, leaving them behind. And even during the working days, uh, you see, you spend all the hours away and so on. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I may think that I did my best, but who knows, I might have not, and uh, they stood to it. So I think uh, the family would be uh, another area I wouldn't forget. But then um, I myself indeed trained during the, the period which uh, we old guys keep on referring to, uh, when you know the, the, the country, the country was taking care of the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, the country was indeed. I, I, I never had problems with my education in terms of finances or anything. I just, what I had to do was pass my exams and qualify for a position and uh, so I kept on hard. going. Yes, so I, will, I want to say that everything was taken care of by the government. You know, even when we went on leave from secondary school, we had warrants to make us travel. So, uh, you know, uh, there was money for us. Money for and us. that's why we feel obliged that yes. we should give back to the nation. Right. I think, uh, I'm sure, some years they are around and so on, people have not experienced that. No, yeah, especially yes. in the current era. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah not the very current, but somehow the near past. Yeah, fine. So, <laughs> okay, so I don't know if I should venture into that, but I think uh, I'm very proud of that, that all people my age yes. cannot complain about that. We went to school uh, and the government, the state, took care of us, made sure that everything was Available. All the time I've spent abroad was taken care of by government. Uh, all the time sponsored. Wow. I never spent my money at mm, all wow. on my training. So I'm extremely grateful to that. Um, but what's, and what's interesting is that the passion you had, as you, you just mentioned, that you 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 um, you feel obliged to give that that back to the society. Yes. Um, so that is telling us that um, you know you put you you basically have to be great grateful for the support you get yes. and leave a great legacy behind. Um, whoever who supports you, you put a hundred out of a hundred into um, what you do and uh, give back to the society. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, my viewers, I am positive that you guys have learned a huge amount of stuff today from this uh, very insightful and powerful um, program with our our um, new surgery, um, Professor Kahamba. We thank you very much, sir, um, for your time. Thank you very much. It and has for been covering a pleasure. Most of our <laughs> yeah, it has been a great <laughs> pleasure to, to be around with you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. Yeah. Thank, thank you very, very much. much indeed. All right, stay Thanks. tuned for more insightful and powerful upcoming programs. We'll be having more inspirational, powerful, outstanding. Um, leaders who are serving this nation who are living have plans to leave great legacies behind and that is what we must take back home today that um you put so much hard work into your goal and vision um professor here has changed our mindset in the in, in the sense that once you get support with or without support you must be able to focus on your vision to focus on your goals to change your mindset and triumph success he is very successful. He's about to open a very, I'm positive it will be uh, successful, a very big hospital. So it doesn't stop here. It's going on. And that is the power and the driving force we should all have to keep going and make sure that 
Even when we die, people will remember us for something spectacular. Stay with us in the next program to come. My name is Pamela. Keep subscribing to our YouTube channel, Wingo TV. Stay tuned and love, love you and stay blessed. Pamela, bye.